Good morning. Welcome in. I thought today was Thursday, but it's only Wednesday. So futures are up. Inflation doesn't matter anymore. We Gucci. Let's go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Um, let's see. Futures are up. Future they were a little bit higher at like three o'clock in the morning. So I got this new night. So apparently I grind my teeth at night, and I never really felt it until last night when I wore this stupid night guard. Good lord, I barely slept last night because uh, clearly I grind my teeth a lot. Maybe maybe I'm working too hard. I don't know. That's a joke. I don't really work that hard. Anyways, futures are popping. Um. What did I want to talk about first? Oh, I wanted to pull up Home Depot first. So Home Depot yesterday reported phenomenal earnings, phenomenal forward guidance. They are the pandemic stock. They've actually, they're like Disney, except they actually did a good job with uh, financially. And they dropped basically 9% yesterday. So this is why we don't trade earnings. Well, at least I don't trade earnings. Um, that's your reason. Lowe's is going to come out. I think they reported already. Uh, did they report this morning? Okay, so they reported this morning, went a different direction. They're basically in the same boat um, as uh, Home Depot. Anyways, I do want to say HP, H. Poyo in here, he uh, he passed his first board exam, USMLE Step 1. So that's actually a huge deal. I, um, I Some of you know I was in med school, but I dropped out. And that is no joke to pass that thing. So step one, done, move on to the next. All right, where are we? Let's see here. S&P logs first correction in two years as Russia-Ukraine conflict escalates. Here's what history says next. Here we go. So S&P fell into correction, Tory for the first time in two years joining the NASDAQ, which happened, NASDAQ happened like a month ago or something like that. Um, now we're not in correction territory anymore this morning, that's for sure. So the last time the S&P entered correction territory, of course, was COVID, February 27th, 2020, which I point to all the time here. And we're back at those levels. So guys, you can't go, 
this whole run up of uh, this whole run up of this market has just been totally insane. You can't have the biggest economic shutdown in the history of the world and just have no repercussions. And that's that's what we're seeing with so many of these companies. We pull them up. I'll pull them up in like 15 minutes from now. But we pull them up on the charts all the time. We're back in we're back in COVID territories, and they're going to go lower. If you, the market hasn't even been hit yet, and a lot of these companies like PayPal and such, good companies are in COVID territory. Th- that's where we started before before all of this nonsense run up of the S and P and the Nasdaq and the Dow. They're going to go lower. Trust me, these stocks are going to go lower, especially tech. Um. This person says, everybody's so, everybody's so still optimistic. The good news for market participants is that history suggests that markets tend to eventually bounce back after broad market benchmark suffers a correction, a gauge by back data since 1928. So let's go here. So this is the S&P after closing in correction territory. If you look at the majority of it, yeah, after one year it's up. But I mean, the, the biggest thing, so we're in a time right now that the only thing you can look, compare what where we're at right now is... You have to go to the extremes because we are in an extreme. It's 2001, which was an extreme, and 2008, which was an extreme. Um, granted, it granted 2008 rebounded relatively quickly. Relatively, I mean, it took three years, but you got to go to these extremes and see what the markets do. I don't think that you can be. This was insane to have 2020 happen and then you just recover by 30 percent in a year. It's totally insane, totally unwarranted, especially with numbers that were coming in so poorly as they were. But um, I think you need to go to the extremes and look at these guys. It's not going to be good when all of this, when all of this happens. Anyways, whatever. Um, where should I go next? Let's do. Yeah, let's do this one. The oil, Ukraine, Russia situation. So apparently, nothing's happening over there just yet. United States did put sanctions on. Uh, Russia yesterday, but they said that it's not going to impact the oil flows, gas flows, etc. So oil has been falling a little bit from the levels of, I think it was 96 a barrel or, or 98 a barrel, whatever it was. So here's the thing that I keep looking at. What's the reason prior to Russia, Ukraine, that we had um, that we had oil running to where it was? It's because the chaos in the economy and the inflation numbers that are just totally rampant and totally out of control and whatever's happening with OPEC right now. So for prices to only be fluctuating now on war talk between two countries, that to me doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, This is why I always say news stories, headline news is not baked into the market reaction yet because this just proves it. So the reason that we had oil running, 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 hitting, I'm just looking right here, 99.50 a barrel, the highest number since 2014, was because of everything that's happening in the economy, inflation, jobs, whatever. And then all of a sudden, this comes out, and now this is fluctuating prices. That tells me right there, prices are not baked in to uh, market reactions. And I, I, wh- whoever says that, I totally disagree with you. Uh, gold prices surging on inflation. <laughs> Russian stocks on sale bigly. So I don't think that I think one of the sanctions that was put on by the White House yesterday was that you can't that US investors can't invest in Russia. I think that's what it was. If I was reading correctly, well, no, if I was listening correctly, I was just listening to CNBC this morning. Um kind of half listening. I, I don't really listen too too closely to them, but um, because I'm more interested in reading the news. Despite but where, what were we talking about again? Gold, gold prices. Okay, so one US, UBS strategist says that he does not believe that the surge in gold will last. Uh, again, you're going to have surges. You're going to have dips. Remember, gold as a hedge is a long-term play. We, every single gold story we read, every single one, it's, it's just day-to-day, day-to-day, week-to-week, whatever. Okay, why don't we go year-to-year? We're expecting gold prices to go lower towards the end of the year. I don't, they didn't really give a reason why. We do think that gold should ultimately be short lived. So basically, what I'm taking away from this right here is they're just bullish on the entire market. So as soon as everything calms down, gold's going to come back down and not going to need to be a hedge. And they're saying that maybe inflation is going to go away. They're saying 1600 by the end of the year. Curbing tactical holdings and hedging strategy ones. Uh, Where, 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 where,
Re yeah, so everything that unforeseeable unforeseeable events have dominated the early months of 2022. Yeah, like inflation. Didn't see that one coming. Russia, I'll give you that one. Uh, Tesla to Jeep, the end of 3G networks is a problem. This is an incredible story. So I was having issues. Guys, smash the like button, please. I was having issues with my car. Um... And I was like, what is going on here? The, the music kept dipping out. And I, maybe it's that. I don't know. It was my Range Rover. It was 2018 Range Rover. So I don't know. Maybe. Millions of vehicles, including Teslas, Audis, Hondas, Nissans, will lose um, some energy. I'm sorry, energy. Emergency and convenience features by Tuesday, yesterday, as AT&T becomes the first telecommunications company to disable its 3G network this year. Verizon and T-Mobile will follow later in the year. Some owners may not be might, may not experience any problems, while other could, others could lose automatic emergency response in the event of a crash or certain infotainment, um, as, such as navigation, smartphone features. This is a okay. This is more of a PSA. So, guys, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get to points points of this article. If you have this brand of car or whatever, you have a little, very little window in, with with some companies to go and do this for free. Then you're going to be charged an exorbitant amount of money to go and do upgrades, like. A, a lot. So pay attention. Being serious. To be clear, discontinuation of 3G, that doesn't matter. Where, where do I want to go? Automakers, even though cellular providers have been warning that their 3G networks will be shut down permanently for some time, many automakers still install the devices in cars as new as 2021 models. They range from discontinuing services. Here we go. Tesla, for example, charging $200 for owners of Model S vehicles built before June 2015 to upgrade their vehicle modem according to its website. Here's another one. This is a big one. I know a lot of people drive Hondas. Owners of some Hondas have until Tuesday to download the software for free. Well, I guess you already missed the boat. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay upwards of $900 for hardware upgrade or lose certain features. So hopefully you did it. Volkswagen, Audi, Stellantis, which owns Jeep, Ram, Chrysler. Uh, they're offering some third-party alternatives to make it a little bit cheaper for you. GM, Chevy, Buick, GMC, Cadillac will be sending remote updates, um, have been re sending remote updates. Toyota basically said, sorry, you're screwed. We give you reliability. That's all you need. Story of Toyota's life. Activision Blizzard um, shakes off report. of. So I guess Call of Duty is not going to come out this year. It's going to push into 2023. The reaction of the stock was basically nothing because it's being sold. And... From my understanding, this happens a lot in the gaming world. Now, it hasn't happened with Call of Duty in 20 years, but anyways. The game's release will be delayed until, 2020, uh, until 2024, making it the first year in nearly 20 years without a ver new version of Call of Duty. We have exciting uh, slate of new premium, free-to-play Call of Duty experiences this year and next year and beyond. Reports of anything else will be incorrect. We look forward to sharing more details when the time is right. In November, the company said it would delay the release of its two most eagerly anticipated titles, Overwatch 2 and Diablo. Is that four or, six? four or six? I don't know. I don't care. I'm not Roman. All right. Good news, bad news here. I don't know. Biden administration sets aside $450 million to unclog the ports. Cool. I, that's good. At least they're doing something to deal with these supply chain issues. Bad part is they're spending more. So... Uh, and it, 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 whatever, whatever at this point, we'll set aside $450 million from bipartisan law um, to accomplish the goal, unclogging U.S. ports. Individual ports will operate as independent, which operate as independent businesses will soon be able to apply for government pay for a wide range of projects from expanding terminals to constructing new piers to creating rail yards and moving goods. Look at this. This is unbelievable. This is L.A. in January. I mean, you should see Manzanillo, same thing down in Mexico. This will allow us to help ease and leapfrog a decade's worth of underinvesting. President Biden is leading the largest ever federal investment in monetizing our country's ports, which will um, improve our supply chain and the lives of Americans who depend on them, Pete Boot Edge Edge said. <sighs> and then they're going to do $17.1 billion, $17 billion in this infrastructure bill. Whatever. Hopefully it works. That's all I got to say about that. Because that's a lot of freaking money to just keep throwing around and uh, not get anything out of it. But I hope it works. I hope it works. Anyways, uh, here's our Instagram handles. Let's go and look at some stuff. 10-year yield, 1.97. 
three months, 0.36, everything's stable. What reports today? Clover Health, disruption. Chesapeake Energy, Clovis Oncology. Actually, that's a legit company. eBay, um, overstock.com. What reports tomorrow? Allegedly Alibaba, Square, Moderna, Nikola, Coinbase, Beyond Meat, Rocket Mortgage Company. God, things getting broke. And then on Friday, uh, Foot Locker. There you go. There you go. If you want to join us, here's everything that you get. Here's all the news that you get. Here's all the videos that you get. Tickers, click join EM. Um, let's see here. $30 a month gets you access to all of that, plus the chat. $80 a month gets you into the Bid and Ask Nation with moi, and you get everything that's offered with the Bid and Ask Nation. Send me some stocks. We'll go through them. And we will go from there. So many stocks in value territory. How do you determine which stocks uh, to go in first? Listen, I don't know. You just pick which ones are the best and go from there. Maybe pick some different sectors to go in. I, I looked at PayPal yesterday. I'm coming up with a price somewhere between 75 and 100 bucks. So now could be a buy point for um, now could be a buy point for uh, what do you call them? What company did I say? PayPal. PayPal. Baba earnings tomorrow. Thoughts on expectations on Baba earnings tomorrow? I have no idea. I, I'm sure it's going to be bad. I mean, look what's been going on in China. So I wouldn't be surprised to see profits way down or revenue way down. Um, when you, they're still, they're doing the same thing right now that we were doing um, in 2020. I would not be surprised to see everything down. I also wouldn't be surprised to see an insane reaction because people are stupid. So there's that. Um, Beyond Meat is my favorite chemical company. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Alibaba. Okay. So yeah, I wouldn't be, I, I really wouldn't be surprised to see this thing take a major hit tomorrow because people are just, people just don't get it. So uh, gap down the last two days. Listen, don't trade it. Just, just leave it. I Even if it, I have not been a proponent of trading this stock for some time. So why don't we look at, let's look at PayPal. Are you worried about Google or Apple taking over PayPal's moat? I don't think PayPal has a moat in any way, shape or form. It's a payment platform. And that's what I think that is. If anybody's going to take over that Venmo, PayPal in that arena, Square. I'm more I'm more concerned about Square than I am about PayPal because guys, I'm a big, I'm the biggest Apple fanboy out there. I've never used Apple Pay to send anybody money in my entire life. I don't even know how to do it. So, that just tells you how powerful PayPal and uh v Venmo are, which is owned by PayPal. So, PayPal has dropped to $105 and if I told you Back here in July of 2020, when this was $310 a share, that this was going to be $100 by the beginning of 2021, you would have told me that I was outside my mind. And here we are. This was COVID right here. So we're at COVID levels. It's just going to keep falling. There's no, there's no stability in there after $102. So if it drops below 102, this thing is going to 85 and below, I'm telling you right now. Um, Home Depot, we can run through Home Depot. So the reaction yesterday was drastic. Um, it's basically taken away half of its COVID gains. If it drops below 316, your next level of support is 300. And then you're coming into the mid, the 280, 290 region. So, um, this is absolutely a short, wait a second. Today's garbage day. You know, it's funny. Yeah, never mind. Um, Home Depot, yeah, you got to let this thing calm down. Unless you want to go short on it, let, let this thing calm down for sure. All right, uh, can we look at Square since we're looking at PayPal? Absolutely. You mean Block? So this one, same thing. If I would have told you in August that at basically $300 a share that this company would be 93 bucks a share today, you would have said that I'm outside my mind and I don't understand disruption and I don't understand how brilliant Jack Dorsey is and this and that and yada, yada, yada. But wrong. So the next support level is probably this $90 range. And after that, it is 60 and then COVID. So good luck to you. This company is now companies are finally getting to the point where, where they are supporting their um, supporting their financials. 
and not overly insane. This back here in November was when Jim Cramer told you to buy Etsy. It was the number one show on, it was the number one stock on Mad Money. I distinctly remember him saying it one night. And that was at $300 a share November. And today it's at $121. If I would have told you that. And then Jim Cramer has the audacity to come out and say that uh, Kathy Wood looks like that she's shooting in a barrel picking stocks. What a scam artist. Um, so. There is not a lot of support in here. So there was a lot of support here and it breezed through that thing like it was nothing. And it's doing the same thing right here. So it's just going to keep, let me draw the lines for you. It's just going to keep stepping down. One, two, three. It's just going to keep coming down, just stepping its way down, lower and lower and lower. Uh, probably back to its IPO levels, which was, yeah, probably 20, 40 bucks, somewhere in there. It'll come back to COVID levels, around $40. So if you're interested in shorting, so setting up is a nice short, even over here, even over here, this beautiful short over the last couple of days. Um, you're past all four major moving averages. Everything is looking excellent. Everything is looking excellent. Would you buy the Ralph Lauren based on the, so Louis Vuitton. Okay. So here's the deal with Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton was, um, no, I would to answer your question. No, I would not buy Ralph Lauren based on the Louis Vuitton rumors. What I will say though, is Louis Vuitton was to buy Tiffany. Louis Vuitton did buy Tiffany. Louis Vuitton was to buy Tiffany a long time ago. The deal went haywire. It, everything, all this ki kind of crazy stuff happened. Whoops, I want to do option R. There we go. Um, all this stuff happened. Eventually, they closed the deal, but they closed the deal at a lower price. So let me go. Oh, no, I can't look up Tiffany. Shoot, because it's, it's gone. Hold on. Let me go back on the charts and see. Uh, no, it was more. Damn. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what it was, but... They said that they were going to buy Tiffany for, it was either $65 or $165 a share. Then they nixed the deal. Then they came back and bought it at a much lower price. If somebody remembers the details, you could say what it is. But um, yeah, I'm just, not, I'm just not a big buyer based on rumors. Now when, now when things come out and they're more solid, absolutely. Like I bought, um, I bought Activision Blizzard. I think it's a great arbitrage play. And here's the best part about it. Let's say that the deal with Microsoft doesn't go through with Activision Blizzard. I still, this is what I think is going to happen. Let me pull up ATV. I, ATV. Uh, is there any water in here? Damn. Um, ATV. I, so when Activision Blizzard got to these levels in here, this is where I really liked it. And then the rumor came out that the rumor came out because I was selling puts around here. Then the rumor came out that, um, Microsoft is going to buy. And then we got the jump. So here's my thought. If the deal goes through and my cost basis is around here, whatever it is, $70, $80, whatever it is. Okay. Well, they just bought them for $95 a share. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that arbitrage play right there. Cool. If this deal doesn't happen, this thing's coming back down here into the fifties and I liked it back here anyways. So to me, I look at Activision Blizzard as this is a great, this is a great play. This is the definition of an arbitrage play that I like. And that's it. Tiffany sold at $131 a share. Thank you. Um, and I think, I think if you go back and look at the history, I think that the number was $165 a share that they were going to buy Tiffany at. I think that's what it was. I'm just trying to remember this all off the top of my head. Um, Palantir. Sure. I don't really know what else to say about this stupid company. I looked at them for literally like 20 minutes yesterday. I, I just don't get it. I mean, any projections that you're going to make here is just purely speculative. There's not a really another company out there that does what they do. It's software. They're going to have huge margins, but who am I, who am I to say when, the, when those margins will come, if those margins will come, what their revenue will be, will be. I guess they don't rely on government contracts anymore. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, to me, anything being done with this is um, speculation or ego driven. I don't, I don't get it. But whatever. Uh, Palantir right now. It's a short. It's a beautiful dog stock. This is the definition of a dog stock. If you get an engulfing candlestick, go on it. Both charts are great. I actually like it over here a little bit more. But um, hey, you do you. Uh, long or short on QQQ today? I'm sure it's going to be. Well, I, I wouldn't be getting into QQQ from a 
trading perspective any way except from from a day trading perspective just because it's all over the map every single day so right now this thing is up i mean we're going to open here so let's say this happens um your trend is not going to change today well it might i i don't know listen don't do qqq as a day trader a long-term trade if you want to do anything with it go on and do it from a day trading perspective okay Huh. Snap. Wait, is this? No, Disney. Disney. Disney's looking interesting. I don't understand why the trend is where it's at right now. So with the change in price that they've in intense change in price that they've had over the past uh basically seven weeks of this year, coupled with pretty low volume within a couple of explosions in volume. I think stochastic might be a little bit wonky right now. So I think I would let this calm down. I think I'd rather come over here, maybe try to get a swing trade down to the uh, 145.17 number and go on from that point. But from a long-term perspective, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would jump on that just yet. VIS Vanguard, is this an ETF? Okay, so, excuse. Oh my God. <clears throat> Why are there so many high? Okay, this is an interesting conversation right now. Vanguard, so you're sitting at a support level, but here's the big thing. You're below all four major moving averages. That's crazy. So listen, if you fall from here, you're coming down to this 175, 174 number, and it's just gonna it's gonna do the same thing as whatever company that was before. You're just gonna keep coming lower. Here's a gap. You're gonna fill that gap, 150, 140, and it's just gonna keep coming down, down, down. Baby, are you down, 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 down? All right. Um, target. So, oh, wait a second. I want to do TJ, TJX, right? TJ Maxx, T, not TJ Maxx, TJX holding company for TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods. Yeah, there's some other ones in there. Big gap down today. So these are these are recession stocks, in my opinion. Um, it was interesting to see the, the way that this went. I don't know what the report was. I don't know what forward guidance was. They missed by revenue. They missed on earnings per share. I don't know what any of that means. Um, other than I'm just seeing those two numbers. So you're going to open at 60 bucks. You got a gap to fill right here. If this continues its downward trend, awesome. Go and fill this gap. The gap will fill down to $55. And the good news is you have no um resistance to fight through of the major moving averages ford ford is uh disruptive because they make uh multiple evs now so they are just flossing so they went to these all-time highs this was a major flagpole pattern i probably told you that this was going to come back down if anybody ever asked me and it sure did so you don't have any support until 16 maybe above 16 dollars a little bit at 14 just above 14 and a lot at 13. So I do probably think that after you get through the 200 day moving average, it's gonna come back to four, 13 bucks. So if you get an engulfing candlestick down uh, with this beautiful trend, good, looking good. Learn how to short guys, learn how to short. I am telling you, this is my favorite song this year. It's down, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, what else do we have? Boeing. Haven't looked at Boeing in a hot minute. Did anybody watch the documentary on Boeing on Netflix? Somebody, please, did you watch it? So I probably started watching like the first couple minutes. That was a snooze fest. That was a snooze fest. Uh, and I kind of got the um, impression that it was maybe a little bit of a hit piece. So I don't know. They came in pretty hot right up right away with this all this uh that crash stuff and just beating down the company so that's why i kind of turned it off not much in hit pieces um boeing yeah so let's zoom out because this is for sure 50 percenter and it's in incredibly obvious this is this is almost a better 50 percenter than um whatever you call it uh cardinal cardinal carnival cruise lines you're not you're going to have a, a lot of trouble breaking through this level right here. This was an anomaly, whatever that happened, uh, probably vaccines came out or something. This 230 number, you ain't going to break through 230. 
First of all, you got to get through 220, which is the 200 day moving average. Then you got to get through 230. Guys, anytime that Boeing, if you're in this stock, this is for future reference, take notes. If this thing ever, if you're ever in this, I don't care when you're in this, what is going on here? If you're ever in this, I don't care when you're in this. If this stock and you're in it and it runs and it's getting up to that 230 region, just exit the position and let it bounce back down. It is going to need so much good news and volume and hedge funds to get into this thing to break through that 230 number. It ain't even funny. And I think the exact number is 232. Speaking of hedge funds, there's a story I wanted to pull up here. Pull this, make this a little bigger. Hedge funds are hating tech stocks. So the momentum chasing uh, hedgy hating tech stocks, according to a new 13F filing, they are moving to hedge funds are moving to energy and financials, which are look which are looked at as safe havens for recessions. Goldman analyzed 788 hedge funds of 2.6 trillion dollars in gross equity positions. The cooling sentiment of tech stocks uh, has just been getting decimated. Tech heavy Nasdaq is down 15% in 2022. The fangs are just getting absolutely abused. Facebook is down 40%. Salesforce is down 22%. Microsoft is down 14%. Everything is just getting hit. So pay attention to what the hedge funds do, guys. Hedge funds are smart. Um, you might not like them. I don't know why you wouldn't, but they are smart and they do the right thing. Anyways, next. Airline stocks are weird. Yeah, airline stocks are weird. Let's look at Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Same thing. You, you get the same thing as Boeing right here. High, low. This is an ETF. Middle ground. Anomaly that happened at the end of 2021. Probably vaccines. And you're stuck and you can't break through $22. Same thing. And the fact that you can't even break through 22, which is the 50% rule. And then you really are never, never going to be able to break through 23 14, which is the 200 day moving average. Can you please review the stock you just reviewed? D dude, I don't even remember what I did the last stock. So um, I, you're gonna have to tell me a lot more than that. <laughs> if you want advice on Alibaba, get Chinese food for lunch and get a fortune cookie. Touche. Stock market is now open. Um, Boeing has terrible leadership. The documentary was good, but one-sided. Didn't mention the FAA's accountability as a pilot. It was pretty interesting. Yep, it seemed pretty one-sided, and I gathered that from about the first two minutes. Let's look at Facebook, and then I'll do one more stock, then I'm going to get out of here. All right. Uh, Facebook's at $204 a share. Getting beat down. Guys, If you're, I'm telling you right now, when is our next earnings report? April 27th, pay attention to them going into their next earnings report. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, a lot of companies and hedge funds and especially quant funds jump into this thing and send this thing soaring to the top side when, uh, when it comes out that, um... listen, this reaction was insane, stupid, insane, call it what you want. I'm calling it what I just did. You have half the globe on your side. Anyways, um, I was making fun of some requests. Murmurs, touche. Thank you very much. Give me one more stock. Uh, FCX copper play. You got it. I like F FCX Freeport Macaron. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, when was, can I go back any further? So, yep. Uh, yep. Right. It was right in here. It was 2015. It was right in here. Cause I remember this is when I uh, got rejected from medical school and I started, I started my first fund and we, I was trading this thing for about $8 a share. It was eight, eight bucks a share for Freeport McMoran. And it was pretty consistently in that 20 to 20 to 10, 20 to $2 range. Um, and then COVID happened. And of course it was an explosion, but $42 a share right now, FCX Freeport McMoran, good stock to trade if you want to, especially from a, uh, a day trade, a swing trading perspective. But right now, Listen, if you get a pop right here and your red line crosses through yellow and you try to approach these highs, go for it. Otherwise, pay attention over here. If you get an engulfing candlestick down day to day, short it down to the 50 and 25 day moving average. And even better, you can get it down to the 100 and 200 day moving average. So that is that. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow morning, same time, same place. And then, of course, tomorrow, uh, the 2 p.m. live stream. So content, content, content. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. Everybody have a wonderful day. Oh, by the way, breaking news. I'm getting a I'm getting a producer to run this show. He's going to sit in my ear.
I have the name hired and I'm going to move to a new studio. Everybody have a wonderful day. Peace.